experience the epic series that the world is watching and raving about. Catch up or relive the first three seasons of Game of Thrones now on HBO On Demand and watch back-to-back -back episodes anytime on your schedule. This year, join the Legion of Followers and enjoy past seasons of Game of Thrones, plus the premiere of season four on April 6th on HBO. Don't miss out. Sign up for HBO and get free access to HBO On Demand. A man found dead in his home the day after his 30th birthday. This as the deputy prime minister declares our economy is under siege. Forecasters unhappy about the state of their airport facilities. The FNM deputy chairman questions the awarding of a $20 million contract. Plus, it's not Christmas, but get ready for Junkanoo. We've got those stories and a whole lot more tonight. I'm Bonnie Toot and Emory 12 starts now. Topping news tonight, one day after celebrating his 30th birthday with family and friends, a man was found dead inside his home off Cowpen Road this morning. The disturbing discovery shocked relatives who gathered at the scene. Jasmine Bonmi was there and has the details. For the second time in just over one week, another murder has occurred here on the southern tip of New Providence. This time, police say the victim was found in a pool of blood inside his home. According to police, the victim had several wounds to the upper body, but they could not say if he was stabbed or shot. The discovery was made around 10 this morning inside a small wooden structure in Nains Gardens, just off Cowpen Road. Superintendent Stephen Dean said the man was found covered in blood while lying on a couch in the home. Police are unable to determine how those injuries happen or what type of injuries. Uh, we are actively investigating We're in the preliminary stage of our investigations, which will determine um, what happened. We have no motive for this information at the moment. We are appealing to members of the public, particularly this community who might have been canvassing the area who might have been walking, who might have heard something, who might know the gentleman, to please contact us. At the scene, the victim's sister, Linda Pierre, identified him as Andrich Claser, also known as Trigger. Pierre says the family is at a loss for words, given his untimely death hours after they all celebrated his birthday. She adds that those celebrations were bittersweet, as it also marked the anniversary of their mother's death. According to Pierre, she had come to her brother's home to drop off some money moments before his body was discovered. I had a break, so I said, let me just come here because I promised him some money. And the people was cooking breakfast, so I said, well, where is, where is, we call him Trigger. So it's like, where's Trigger? So there's like, um, he probably still home sleeping or whatever. So I said, okay, I have some money for him, let's go. And so the rocks were a little too high. So stayed back, I stayed back, and my little brother just came, five minutes later, just came running back, said, he's dead, he's dead. I said, what you mean, he's dead? So I went running too. So when I said, I just saw the lifeless body just lying there, full of blood, holes. I didn't know whether he got shot or stabbed because there's blood everywhere and holes all over his body. Now, Pierre says another brother who had lived in the house with the victim had just seen Hendrich alive earlier in the morning. She described her brother as a fun person who worked on construction sites. She says she doesn't know who would want to hurt her brother, but added that it's a question she and her family once answered. That's the same question I think everybody wants to find out because it's a shocking to everybody. Police say they have few clues to follow on this latest murder and are asking anyone with information in the case to contact them at 919-911 or 502-9991. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Bonamy. Deputy Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis today declared that our economy is under siege as a result of crime and accused the media of taking delight and fanning the flame by highlighting crime. Davis, who was speaking during the launch of the Urban Renewal Commission's Peace Ambassadors Initiative, also asserted that we live in an angry society. Crime and criminality and other antisocial behaviors affect our traditions and culture. Our morals and values are being diluted. Our social fabric 
is coming apart at the seams. Our economy is under siege. Our very livelihood at stake. With 43 homicides already on record so far this year, Deputy Prime Minister Philip Brave Davis says there appears to be an incipient sense of anger, rage, impatience and intolerance in our homes and in our communities. In fact, as he was addressing peace ambassadors at police headquarters today, police were on the scene of a homicide. It's the sixth one in the past week. We are an angry society and we need to calm our most vicious tendencies to lash out at everything and everyone. The deputy prime minister blamed the media for compounding this problem by highlighting crime in the country. This type of behavior has not been made easier by the fact that we have a media and other forms of social communication which seem to take delight in flaming this fire of discontent. However, back in April 2012, it was Davis who defended the Progressive Liberal Party's decision to put up controversial murder posters that read, under the FNM, 490 plus murders in several areas frequented by tourists. And what I see a problem with, I see a problem with the government being unable to address the issues that would attract to tourists to come here. Don't forget now, the tourist arrival has already been spiraling downwards, not upwards. We cannot hide the truth. Are we, are we about hiding the truth? Are we about hiding the truth? The PLP insisted at the time that it was simply stating a fact, even though some tourists called it a scary first impression of the Bahamas. I thought y'all had 490 murders this year, and that kind of concerned me a little bit. Free National Movement Deputy Chairman Dr. Dwayne Sands says the PLB should be the last one to blast the media over crime, considering the Progressive Liberal Party highlighted crime while in opposition as an election ploy. It's interesting how once the shoe is on the other foot, things change. So leading up to the 2012 elections, you had these big yellow billboards all over the Bahamas. The murder count is this, and this is the murder count under the FNM. And if you remember, rally after rally, they had uh, the answers for crime. Now that we're at 42 or 43, or who knows what the official count is, all of a sudden now it is, oh, the press is sensationalizing crime or sensationalizing murders, and that, oh, we should all be working together. Well, why didn't you have that feeling when you were trying to get elected? Prime Minister Perry Christie today condemned what he called a savagery in politics, asserting that Bahamian politics is becoming increasingly savage. While addressing peace ambassadors, Christie said no matter how much he wants to beat his political rivals into oblivion, politicians must be able to agree on certain things and set a good example for young Bahamians. No matter how much he wants my job, There is a point beyond which he ought not to go. And likewise, no, no matter how much I want to beat them into oblivion, there's a point to which I should draw the line. That's civility. That's spirituality. That is good citizenship. Christie also gave some insight into his relationship with his political rival and predecessor, former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram. He suggested people may be shocked to learn they have maintained a relationship, adding nothing will stop them from standing together. Well, on Friday, I met in a place looking for a particular person, and I found out that particular person came into the same place looking for a particular person. And when people saw me and Hubert Ingram sitting together, they... But that was the particular place and the particular person I went looking for. And he was, I was the particular person at that particular place that he went looking for. But no, the point I make is this, though. The point I make is this. As I sit with him, I know that he's thinking now how he could stick it on me. But he knows I know that. Just as Brother Lightman knows, but nothing is going to stop us from standing together. 
Well, forecasters based at the Met Office at Linden Pinling International Airport say they're getting sick from conditions they're forced to work in, and if their situation is not improved, they may be forced to ground all flights until the issue is resolved. Paige McCartney reports. Workers of an essential government agency say they've been forgotten about as there have been no provisions made for them in the new multi-million dollars cutting-edge facility where they're based. The conditions he and his fellow forecasters are forced to work under are just short of deplorable, according to meteorologist Wayne Neely, who says they watched as all airport workers packed up from the old domestic terminal to move into the new marble-clad and state-of-the-art terminal that has opened in its place. Neely says daily, as he enters the old standard for domestic travel, he's met with the musk of mold that permeates the back of the throat, causing him to go through at least one pack of Benadryl a week to relieve the now scratching cough and sinus issues he's developed. He claims things have deteriorated to the point where some employees have been warned by medical professionals not to return to work in the building. They built a multi-million dollar airport, and for some strange reason, they never factored the meteorological forecast office mm -hmm. section into that new airport. Mm -hmm. So we forced to stay at the whole airport and it's, as you can tell, it's very dusty. There's mold, the sand is terrible. When you come in there, the sand is terrible and that's a thing that we have to do on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And several of our officers got sick because of the mold and the severe allergies they experienced. It. And one officer in fact had to actually, had to be transferred from the forecast office to our administrative section on East Street because of the of mold and other bad working conditions. Mm -hmm. All that's been said in response to the plight of the forecasters is that the ministry is trying to find a new location for the approximately 30 people who are required to operate out of the dank and dusty office, according to Neely. He said theirs is a critical service of government and the airport, and they're required by law to be stationed at LPIA. Without the, the work of the forecast office, the meteorologist and the forecast office, there would be no planes allowed to take off all land without a meteorological office. Mm. And it's critical because one of the things that the forecast does provide something called altimeter setting for the airplanes. Every aircraft needs that. Mm. And that is done every hour on the hour. And that has to be at the airport. If you, if you place it, let's say, for example, you put it several miles, a few feet down, I mean, the, the, air, the readings would be in error. Mm. So it's, a, it's vital that we have a forecast office section of part of meteorology at the airport. That's critical. And I find it pretty it's sad that they built a multi-million dollar airport and didn't make provisions for, for the forecast office, for the meteorological office. Neely said instead of simply forecasting the weather, officers are now forced to battle it in their own offices because of the leaky roof that lets water in every time it rains. Calls to the Minister of Transport and Aviation, Glennis Hannah Martin, were not returned up to airtime. However, Neely said those in authority have been made aware of the issue. He said he hopes it can be resolved before any kind of action takes place. Well, I'm hoping that they, they, they remedy the situation soon. Yeah. Okay. Because the hurricane scene is right yeah. here, and we definitely need an ideal place yeah. to work. You say it even leaks in here when it, it rains? It leaks when it rains, it leaks. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the weekend, we had a, in the back there was full with water, so it leaks sometimes when it rains. And uh, yeah, but the biggest problem is the mole and the, the bats. And Reporting for MB12 News, I'm Paige McCartney.